Good day, everyone. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. So today we're going to start talking about the the immune system and do a general overview. And uh, I'd like to go, get right into uh, talking about the the different uh, or the most important cells of the immune system, and uh, these would include the white blood cells. Now. When we suspect somebody of an immune problem, uh, maybe they have an infection, we suspect some sort of infection, be it a, bi a viral infection, a bacterial infection, a protozoal or parasitic infection, um, or even something called the prion, prion type diseases, um, often some of the first tests that you'll see done are um, tests of the white blood cell, and this test is part of um, a test known as the CBC, or the complete blood count. And some of the things that we look at in the CBC would include looking at the, um, the red blood cell count, looking at the hemoglobin and hematocrit levels, and looking at the white blood cell count. And generally what we're looking for is to see if that count is elevated or if it's low. If the white blood cell count is elevated, that, that means there are increased numbers of white blood cells in our body, and that can be due to a variety of uh, reasons. It can be due to infection. Um, it can also be due to certain types of, of blood uh, cancers um, known as leukemias, uh, leuco being white and emia uh, being a problem with the white blood cells, um, a variety of different types of white blood cell cancers out there. Um, it can even be due to certain toxins. Uh, exposure to certain substances can also cause a, our white blood cells to increase and even, even allergies and uh, anaphylactic or allergic, uh, severe allergic reactions, and asthma attacks, and chronic inflammation such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease can cause um, our white blood cells to become altered. And then of course even um, immunosuppression. Say somebody has a disease like lupus where they have to take drugs to suppress their immune system. You know, we can see issues with white blood cells there. Um, so a whole variety of, of, of things can cause our white blood cell count to be um, altered. The normal white blood cell count in, in the average adult is about five to 10,000 cells per um, cubic millimeter, or per milliliter. So five to 10,000. Above 10,000, we generally are considering an infection, or, or not necessarily an infection, but we're, we, we wanna consider some sort of process that has um, caused the immune system to uh, be more active than it normally would. Less than five and we want to consider some sort of uh, condition that can cause immunosuppression. Now that's not the whole story. Um, there are actually different types of white blood cells and that's what I want to talk about. There are um, five general types of white blood cells and uh, a, a, a phrase that I learned in anatomy and physiology that has just stuck with me um, throughout my entire life has been the following. Just think of this. Never let monkeys eat bananas. And that'll help you memorize uh, the five types of white blood cells. And not only will it help you memorize it, but it will help you memorize the order of um, common occurrence that you'll find these guys. So never is in um, and think neutrophils. These are the most numerous type of white blood cells, followed by let, which are lymphocytes, the next most numerous. Monkeys, the M is monocytes. Um, eat is eosinophils. And then finally, the, the rarest type of white blood cell that we'll find are the bananas or basophils. So let's just talk about what these bacteria do. The neutrophils are the most uh, common bacteria. There are about three to 7,000 of them per um, cubic millimeter or uh, per milliliter. Now, if my white count is elevated, um, the physician, and, and you might even want to consider ordering what's known as a differential. Um, and a differential actually looks at the five types of white blood cells and breaks them down. Just a normal CBC will only tell you about the white blood count. It will not differentiate the five different types of white blood cells. So sometimes when, when people have, certainly when we expect a pretty bad infection, we'll do a differential to try and figure out which cell, which white cell is activated because different white cells do different things. So the neutrophils 
uh, normal counts three to seven thousand. If the neutrophils are elevated, that generally or often indicates a bacterial infection. Neutrophils um, do what's known as, as phagocytosis. They they basically eat bacteria. That that's kind of how they work. They they secrete a variety of enzymes into the, the environment and that can help degrade bacteria, destroy their cell walls, what have you, and then they kind of phagocytize and uh, destroy bacteria, kind of gobble them right up. Well, there are two types of neutrophils. There are banded neutrophils and segmented neutrophils. And when we do a differential, it will tell you uh, bands and segments. Um, Segmented neutrophils are what we call mature neutrophils. They're, they're neutrophils that have, that have lived long enough to mature, which is, is I believe, several hours, some, some like six hours. Um, and the neutrophil life cycle isn't that long anyway. It's only, I think, six hours to a few days, um, a week maybe. Um, be that as it may, uh, when my, the segmented neutrophils are, the, the, are the, the mature neutrophils, so that means if my, my white count's elevated, I look at the differential, the neutrophils are elevated, and there are seg segments, lots of segments, that means that this infection maybe have, has gone on for a little while and, and maybe even a chronic kind of problem because um, they're, they're all mature cells. However, if the banded neutrophils are elevated, those are immature neutrophils, and those immature neutrophils are um, what indicates an acute bacterial infection. So this is somebody that comes into the ER, we think they have a, a acute, maybe a serious infection, maybe it's a pneumonia or um, you know, bad cellulitis or, or something on, you know, urosepsis, something on the lines of that. Um, even you know, bad cellulitis or inf infection of the, um, the tissue, the skin tissue. Um, so Elevated bands indicates a an acute process occurring. This is not something chronic. This is something acute, and this is something we need to investigate um, rather expeditiously. And generally, they'll say, if you have more than six percent bands on your differential, if you have more than a than a six pack of bands, we have an issue. Okay, let's move on to the next type, the lymphocyte. The lymphocytes are a little different. The lymphocytes work through something known as antigen um, antibody response, and we'll talk about that here in, in another video. Um, they generally, if they're elevated, we're generally looking at some sort of leukemia or a viral infection. When we talk about fighting viruses, we generally do this through antigen antibody, uh, an antigen antibody response. Monocytes are kind of like the vacuum cleaners. Uh, they kind of eat up all the garbage that's left over and dead bacteria and, and debris. So they kind of come in and, and, and clean, kind of clean things up after the battle, if you will. Um, when mono, uh, monocytes can also be called macrophage, and um, these specific cells can actually, um, uh, white cells can actually leave and they can migrate, um, actually, you know, leave the, the blood vessels and migrate through the tissue and gobble stuff up. Uh, and, that, and so you may hear the term a macrophage, and then they become you know, monocytes. Uh, so monocyte macrophage, pretty much a synonymous, ter a synonymous term. Excuse me. Um, eosinophils um, are generally going to be what fight our parasitic infections, and they're also associated with inflammation. So patients that have um, asthma attacks, bad allergies, bad allergic reactions, generally will have their eosinophils elevated. And that yellow sputum that you guys talked about earlier on in, in the semester, well, yellow sputum is actually indicative of eosinophilic um, infiltration of the, the, the lung tissue, um, some sort of inflammation going on. So that's why it's not uncommon to see patients with asthma have um, yellow sputum. And it's not necessarily an infection. It may be um, due to inflammation. And then basophils are the last. Uh, basophils are associated with inflammatory response, and they're responsible for releasing histamine. Um, histamine, as we know, causes vasodilation. It causes our vessels to be leaky, so nutrients and fluid can leave the vessels and get out into the tissue where they're needed to go. Um, unfortunately, this can cause swelling of the airway. This can cause a drop in the blood pressure. Um, this can cause itchiness. Uh, can cause trouble breathing because of swelling of the airway, so um, that's not necessarily a good thing when I have lots of histamine being released. Okay guys, this is just a general overview of uh, the uh, immune system and the immune response. Take care.